Hey everyone, Tony here, JP Wisco, back with another video for you. And today, uh, as you can see in the title, I am going to show you my very first uh, vintage mantle card. Uh, but I'm also going to show you a bunch of other cool cards, so let's just get right into it. Uh, first up, we got this really awesome 1994 Stadium Club Deion Sanders. For some reason, I just really love the look of this card. It's just really, you know, if you know me, you know I like 90s. And it just has this, like, really 90s aesthetic. Uh, Deion Sanders, obviously, just, like, one of the most remarkable athletes ever. Uh, Hall of Famer in football. And a pretty decent player and pretty decent baseball player, too, to boot. I feel like uh, Bo Jackson gets more kind of love or more hobby love is kind of the the two sport player, but Dion was kind of arguably, uh, overall more impressive. Maybe, uh, uh, I got this, uh, pretty cool card. Uh, this is from, I don't know what it is. 2000, I believe 2000 upper deck. I guess it's called holographics. And I believe this was a retail only product. And this is a Griffey insert. You know, usually I don't. Um, Griffey in a Reds uniform. <laughs> it's a little bit like Pujols in an Angels uniform. It's kind of like meh. But it's a pretty nice looking card. And I think it's kind of a somewhat scarce insert. I like the back too. So um, Recently watched that Griffey documentary. That was pretty cool. Uh, this is a poll that I, I've got some packs. I think it's 2015 tops. And I got this Derek Jeter insert, this baseball royalty. So I've got a Jeter PC. I thought this was pretty nice. Um, it's kind of a thick card stock. Uh, let's see here. Dug around and found this pretty awesome Tim Lincecum uh, Diamond Anniversary. This is uh, 2011. Um, right, because it's Diamond Anniversary. Um, big Tim Lincecum fan. He was one of my favorite players in the brief time that he played. And I found this... Uh, 2019 Ginter uh, Warren Spawn Hot Box Gold. Very nice. 2019 uh, Ginter is just really nice looking. Um, a lot better than like 2018. 2020 doesn't look that good. It looks kind of bland and, uh, but you know. Okay, uh, and I've also got this, uh, I also got another vintage uh, Menko, Japanese vintage uh, Menko card in. Um, I'm bad in that I didn't do the proper research on this one, so right off the bat, it's hard to read the text. I can't really, I don't know who the player is, but it's a gold border. Uh, so I just think the gold border looks pretty cool on a vintage card, so... Thought that card was just had a lot of nice like pop to it. All right, uh, and this says uh, missile, and again I don't know who these guys are, but that's what makes it cool. Oh man, so I I picked this up real cheap. Uh, this is a 2018 Panini Donruss Optic uh, Shohei Otani uh, hollow, which is of course a refractor, but I believe tops has that trademark. So they call them prisms or hollow. This is, I think I got this slab for about $15. Um, uh, you know, a nine Shohei Otani Ray rookie, pretty cool card for 15 bucks. Of course, you're probably well aware at this point that <laughs> Otani got absolutely lit up today. Uh, well, at least today at the time of me recording this, uh, in his first start back from Tommy John in, like, his first start in, like, two years. Uh, you know, didn't record an out, five earned runs. Um, you know, I think you'll bounce back. You're away for two years. Sometimes, you know, Tommy John, you just got to get back into it and stuff like that. I think he's probably also kind of had some mental, uh, mental blockage, maybe. You know, I could see even subconsciously, even if he felt like he was ready to go, just not giving it all his gas or, you know, just kind of some lingering doubts about the 
not wanting to blow his arm out and stuff. I know I'd probably be like that. Uh, all right, so next up, uh, I finally picked up one of these. So 2014 Bowman Chrome Mookie Betts first Bowman. This is just the regular base Chrome. Um, Mookie, obviously, you know, he signed the big contract extension with the Dodgers. He kind of shocked a lot of people with that. And now Mookie cards have kind of exploded. Uh, I saw this for sale at my LCS and I kind of decided to just grab it. You know, of course the first Bowman's, they're not like the tops, uh, rookies or anything. They're not, you know, if they're not the auto version, they're not, they never seem to get too crazy, but, um, you know, I think this was 20 bucks. So I definitely slept on Mookie. Like I told myself, in 20, I got to pick up Mookie. I got to pick up Mookie. I got to pick up his, you know, rookies and stuff. I just, you know, I don't have a lot of Mookie. So this is kind of like my best Mookie card, unfortunately. And I just, you know, that's, you know, I knew I should have picked him up. I think his update rookie in a 10 is going for like 600 something dollars, you know, crazy. So. Uh, but I also picked up this at my LCS, and I think this is a great pickup. So here's a 2012 uh, Topps Finest Bryce Harper uh, Green Rookie, uh, Green Refractor. And this is just an awesome looking card. I like the etching and the texture. And Harper, you know, I, I like Harper. I've always been a Bryce Harper fan. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people don't like him. They don't like his personality, which I don't really get. Um, and they don't, you know, he's kind of, you know, cause his production is very sort of like Jekyll and Hyde, but I like Harper. I think he's a fun player. And I think, you know, he came into the league so early that, uh, I think his sort of his compile numbers, you know, even if he kind of just continues his current level of production, uh, that uh, his compile numbers will kind of make him a Hall of Famer eventually. You know, 19 year old true rookie, and he hits like 25, 30 home runs a year. So, all right. And then I got a nice, another nice Manco. This one is awesome. This is a 1959 Sadaharu O rookie card. I finally got an O rookie. Uh, I've got a nice little mango collection, a nice little vintage Japanese collection started. Um, but I had yet to get pick up an O rookie. Um, I got this at a great price. Um, I believe I got this for about $45 here in Japan. And I think I could sell this for several times that uh, to an American collector or a North American collector. Um, you know, oh, he's definitely the most sought after, valuable, and collected of the vintage Japanese players for whatever reason. You know, the vintage cards, the old Manko cards, there's just not a huge, huge market for them in Japan. I mean, there's not a huge market for them, you know, in the United States either, or North America, I should say, US, Canada, right? There's not a huge market, but the market for the Manko cards and stuff is actually stronger. So very weirdly, uh, you know, a Western collector would probably pay more for Sadaharu O than a Japanese collector would. Um, which is pretty crazy, but, you know, it is what it is, and I got this car for a great price, so really happy to add an O rookie uh, to my collection. So that's the first of the big ones. Uh, my other big slab that I finally got in is this one. So let me fix the seal here. So this is my 1970 Topps Nolan Ryan. Uh, in an extra uh, excellent min six, um, you know this this card just uh, I really like this card. I mean, obviously that's kind of a flippant thing to say, but because of course you should like all the cards you get, right? If they're in your collection, but you know sometimes for me cards I just sort of wait for them to kind of like I don't know speak to me, I guess, and I just like some cards I just keep going back to, and uh, for Nolan Ryan this was it. Um, 
for whatever reason, I just really like this, even compared to his 69. Uh, something about it just looks really nice to me. So um, obviously it's really off center. Uh, for me, my personal philosophy on vintage cards is um, I don't sweat centering quite as much as edges and corners. If a vintage card has sharp corners like this one, I that's my main thing. And this obviously has really sharp corners. I imagine that this might perhaps, if the grade, the person who submitted it for grading had um, allowed, uh, had wanted a qualifier instead, I imagine this might have been like an eight with an off center qualifier because obviously it's very off center. But man, other than that, this card is just immaculate. So awesome, awesome card. So stoked to have that. Nolan Ryan, 1970. And then, uh, of course, the moment you've all been waiting for. So this is my very first uh, Mickey Mantle card. And this is the one I went with. So here's a 1959 Topps Mickey Mantle. You know, my first Mantle. Um, this card, I saw it, you know, the thing is, um, I'm not, I'm not a huge Mickey Mantle guy. Like, I mean, obviously Mantle's like a hobby legend and he's one of the biggest baseball heroes ever. I'm not a huge Mickey Mantle guy. Of course, I like the Mick, you know, I like all the old timers and stuff and, you know, I appreciate him as one of the best to ever do it. Um... But just in terms, you know, there are definitely sort of old timers that I'm kind of more personally a fan of. You know, Hank Aaron, Sandy Koufax, uh, Lou Gehrig, to name a few. But, you know, obviously I like the Mick. And I just, uh, I felt like if I was going to get a Mickey Mantle card, it would just have to be the sort of the perfect storm, I guess. And for me, this card was just the perfect storm. I mean, look at this card. So it's graded a 2. And, I mean, this thing is just... Like, I don't think a Marine Sniper could center this card better. <laughs> so it's it's immaculately centered. Yeah, the corners have a little bit of wear, but nice sharp corners, not round corners. The reason this is bumped, if you can see, there's a little bit of creasing here um, across his face and across the surface of the card. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know a lot about it, but I believe that PSA uh, treats that sort of... Uh, wrinkling or creasing very harshly uh, so this was a two and i got this card at a really nice price um so yeah i mean not really much left to say i mean it's a you know it's a mickey mantle card dead centered 59 I knew like one one of my criteria for getting my first mantle um, was that it had to be a '50s mantle. Uh, I didn't want to get a '60s mantle. Um, you know, like I said, not a huge Mickey Mantle guy. So for me, '50s mantle is obviously like the quintessential mantle. I didn't want to, you know, get sort of like the '60s very end of his career. Sort of, you know, he's getting a little more jolly and kind of old, you know, past his prime cards. Had to be a '50s one. I think this card is awesome. It just pops so well. You know, nice picture of the Mick there, and uh, yeah, not really much left to say. Um, I really, really wanted to get the '56 mantle, uh, but man, that card is expensive. Like. You know, I guess that's a good thing, like, I'm not, you know, the number one Mickey Mantle fan, otherwise I'd probably be pretty sad, because, I mean, his cards are just, for the most part, they're just way too rich for my blood, uh, but this was an awesome opportunity, so just real happy uh, to have that, and yeah, so I'll give you one last look at all these, kind of the, my three best, most recent pickups. And with that, I will see you next time. As always, thanks for watching. Peace.